Today, I'm going to talk about web accessibility testing. And I want to share with you uh, some recommendations uh, to have in mind during the testing phase, as well as some tools and processes that I find helpful during my daily work as a software engineer. But let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Adrian. Uh, I'm from Spain. Uh, I work as an accessibility software engineer at GitHub. And in my daily work, I try to advocate for the principles of accessibility in engineering and web development. And I try to share this knowledge in, on my social networks, on Twitter, and you can find me under my surname. My handle is at Bolonio, at B-O-L-O-N-I-O. -O -O. So um, I'm very thrilled to share the stage in this conference with so many digital accessibility experts. And um, the fact is, uh, I'm very glad to hear that we are talking more and more often about accessibility in engineering. And this is because we've worked so hard to set standards and a common knowledge on in the real world to understand that situations like the one that you that I show you in this slide are completely wrong. Uh, the first two situations are two steep ramps uh, where it's very difficult to use for uh, physically impaired people. The second situation is a ramp with stairs at the end. And the fourth situation is a ramp with fences around it. So it's totally useless. So it is clear that there's something wrong here. Let me put you another example. Uh, someone who's coming in a wheelchair presses an accessible button and a door is opening automatically, but surprise, there are stairs at the other end of the, of the door. So this common knowledge uh, can tell us that the testing phase of these situations either not been done or not been done properly. Um, but when we move to this digital accessibility world, it is not so obvious that this testing phase has not been done properly. Uh, when we talk about access web accessibility or digital accessibility, we talk about tools, about web tools, technologies that they are built, <clears throat> uh, they are accessibly, accessibly built, and they are built to not exclude anyone uh for using these technologies um so when you see a website immediately uh you cannot tell if the testing phase of accessibility has either done or done properly uh, in this example you are going to your favorite uh online commerce shop and you want to check your latest purchases but you don't know how to find them. So you might want to call the support team and they're gonna tell you something, oh, you need to click in the button in the top right corner. Or you want to change your email address and they can tell you something like, you need to click on the button with the engine icon. But for someone who is completely blind, there is no such as a button who looks like an engine icon or a top right corner icon. So we need to have this in mind when we develop our products. Often people think that or associate web accessibility with only visually impaired people. But the fact is there are other types of impairment. Uh, we can categorize them as permanent, temporary, or situational, for example, touch or hearing impairments. But um, for the sake of this uh, presentation, I'm going to focus only in visually impaired uh, impairments. And let me give you some quick numbers. Uh, in 2021, we were about 7.9 billion people in the world, and more than 2.2 billion people has uh, some kind of visual impairment in any degree. So with this huge number in with these huge numbers in mind, we we can think about the impact that the development of our web products can make in these people's lives. Um, I'm sure 
youth here already and you are going to attend great talks in this conference about implementing web accessibility, the importance of accessibility, and of course, new tools that you can use. But I'm going to focus only on testing. I consider testing web accessibility a key part of a development process that, that covers the whole part of, of the product. Um, and I want to, to focus on four different perspectives or approaches from testing while you are developing, maybe moving to a more manual and automate testing and using uh, browser tools. Because we cannot forget that only between only 20 to 50% of all accessibility issues can be uh, detected via automate test, which they are good, don't take me wrong, but they can they are part of a larger testing process where manual tests are as important as those automate tests. So the first recommendation that I give you is test your code while you develop. So of course, uh, I, I built a small application to, to, to prove that this uh, can be done. I did it in React. Don't worry about the visibility of, of the slides. It's going to be a link uh, to the repository later so you can inspect it better. I created a React application with three tiny components. Uh, one is a button. The second one is a fake button, which is an anchor leak with the roll button. Spoiler alert, don't do this. And the third one is an image. And in the entry point of the application, I put a lot of accessibility error. So let's see if we can find it. Um, so the first tool that I want to show you, and I guess most of you know, is Axe uh, from DQ. And in this time, there is a library for React. And as well, there is something for Vue or Angular. And of course, you can check if there is for the framework that you are developing with. Uh, in this case, you need to install it as a developer dependency in your application, either using npm or yarn, depending on the package that you are uh, using. And you need to make sure that you import the library and you execute it only in an environment that is not a production environment. Because you are going to expose those vulnerabilities and you don't always want to do it publicly. What is this tool doing? This tool will execute the accessibility tests uh, over the Axe engine, and they are going to be displayed. These vulnerabilities are going to be displayed in the console of the development tools of your browser. What we can see is uh, the severity level of the issue, either if it's critical or serious, moderate or minor. Minor. They are grouped if the same vulnerability has occurred several times. Uh, we can see the specific HTML element in the DOM structure who's causing the vulnerability. And as well, there is a link to DQ University, which is the resource uh, that DQ put together to uh, inform you and educate uh, about the vulnerability and how to solve it. Another tool that we can use are linters. Uh, for those who don't know what an inter, a linter is, a linter is a configuration tool where you can specify different rules uh, that your code needs to follow. If your code uh, doesn't follow those rules, you are going to see an alert, a, a small pop-up uh, appearing in your code editor so you know where the error is. <coughs> Uh, in this case, um, we see in the left side, uh, there is a config file for, uh, for my project and I've installed the JSX A11Y uh, plugin for the ESLint and I extend the recommended accessibility tools. Um, so in my, in my code, in my code editor, if I make a mistake, I'm going to see a red wavy underline under the line of code that is causing the error. And if I hover with the mouse, uh, I'm going to see a pop-up telling me more about this issue. 
and what is the rule that I am violating. As well, those uh, the violations can be displayed or are going to be displayed in the terminal when I run my application. If you are developing um, a design system or a, com a component library, you might want to test your component in a more isolated um, environment. So a storybook is a great tool to test your, uh, your components. I wrote about how to test the accessibility of your components using storybook. So you can go to my blog and read about this. The next recommendation that I can give you is use the development tools of the browser. So every browser has built in a great tools to test the accessibility of your of the parts of your website. Um, Chromium, either Chrome or Microsoft Edge, has uh, has great tools uh, built in. For example, the color picker, where you can click in the uh, color of the of your text, and is going to uh, tell you the contrast ratio values, and as well is going to evaluate if the double A or triple A test passed or failed. As well, you can see some lines. Uh, so they're going to tell you which colors are going to pass and which not. And of course, Firefox has uh, exactly the same uh, tool built in, in the browser. <coughs> As well, um, there is an accessibility panel built in in the browsers. Again, Chromium has it. And what you can see here is the accessibility name computation values. So we can see the computed properties, and we can see as well the hierarchy of the properties. So we can see that the title is less valuable than the content, then audio label, and then audio label by. And as well, in the top, we can see the accessibility tree. So we can identify the hierarchy of the DOM um, elements in uh, in in the in the DOM structure. As well, uh, Firefox has the pretty much the same tools, so you can see as well the accessibility tree and a bit more text over color contrast and the accessibility name. So I recommend you to use the development tools uh, of the browser because um, they are quite powerful. <coughs> Another recommendation, write your own unit test. Um, it is something that we developers tend to forget um, about writing our own unit test, but Yest, which is a JavaScript library uh, for that purpose, put together very good. And of course, Axe has, uh, or Yest has a extension to use the Axe engine. Uh, in this case, again, we need to install it as a developer dependency of our application. And we are ready to write our accessibility tests or unit tests using, in the case of React, we can use the React on server to render the whole HTML of the application and convert it to a string. And after converting it to, this, to a string, we can throw it to the Axe engine. And of course, we expect to have no violations. When we run the test in the terminal, we are going to see pretty much the same results that we saw with Axe core in React. So we're going to see what element is causing the error. Uh, we are going to see uh, which violation. So what, what principle are we violating? Um, we're going to see as well Again, a link to DQ University, again, the resource that DQ put together to, to educate and, and let us know how to solve this problem. And as well, um, the expected uh, result for this, for this issue. Now that we're talking about the terminal, another recommendation that I can give you is 
uh, use CLI, Common Line Interface Tools, to run your accessibility tests in the terminal. So we move from testing in the, in the code editor or in the development tools of your browser, we slowly are moving to a terminal-based testing tools. And in this category, I can, of course, uh, suggest different tools. The first one, again, we are back to the Axe family. <clears throat> we are going to the Axe Core CLI tool. Uh, in this case, we need to install it globally in our machine. In this case, we don't need to do it in a project level one. We need to do it in, as a globally global installation in our machine. And we just we can just uh, run the command in, in our terminal, followed by the URL of the page that we want to test. So in this case, I'm testing in Stack Overflow. It's a well-known website. And we put in the terminal X, followed by stackoverflow.com. <clears throat> And this is going to run a headless instance of Chrome and is going to perform all the tests that Axe um, always does. So we can see a very similar result from, uh, from the other Axe tools. Again, which error are we having? Uh, which HTML element is provoking this error? In this case, we can see as well a bit of um, the hierarchy of this of these elements. If if we have a um, this vulnerability several times, um, and we see again the link to the to the university for this for those resources. Very similar application, a very similar library is PA eleven Y. Uh, again, we need to install it globally in our machine, and we can run it exactly the same as X, followed, so P11Y, followed by the URL that we want to test in the terminal. Um, and we can see that uh, the procedure is the same. They are going to probably, it's not specified, but probably is another headless instance of a browser, and is going to give us and provide us uh, results on, on the terminal, in the terminal. So we can see, again, a bit of information of what is the error in a, in a, in a more plain language. Uh, we can see the whole structure of the DOM until the element that is provoking or causing the violation. We can see the specific element, a specific HTML element that is causing the issue. And another good information here that we didn't have with, with Axe is the what principle of the WCAG is the one that is, that is uh, violated. In this case, we don't have any link to any documentation or any uh, resource. It is our homework to go and search for the information on how to solve this issue. Um, of course, you don't need to always test uh, against a, a, a URL, against a server. Uh, you can, of course, test it over your local host. <clears throat> and um, as well, uh, it might be uh, a good question to say, I have a lot of URLs to test, uh, and I don't want to build my own script for that purpose. So this library, PA11Y, um, provides a CI extension where you can specify a config file in the root in the root of your folder. So first of all, we need to install it globally in our machine, but in a project level, we can have this config file. So in this file, in this JSON file, what we specify is an array of URLs to test. And the good part of this library is we can specify actions. We can wait for an element with a specific ID or specific class to load in screen. We can click on, on links and buttons. We can take screen captures. So uh, we just need to run in the terminal, of course, in the root folder of our product, 
uh, of our project, PI11Y-CI, and is going to look for this uh, config file. And since it's going to perform all the tasks. Of course, it's going to take a bit more time because we are uh, navigating through screens and taking screen captures. And we can see that the results in the terminal are pretty similar. Again, what element is the one who's causing the problems or the issue? Uh, a bit of text explaining what the issue is and uh, the whole DOM structure until the element that is provoking the issue. And as I said, uh, this library allows us to take screen captures. So these screen captures, screenshots can be used for reporting purposes, or it could be used for visually integration tests. So you can test as well the styling of your website, and if it has changed or not. Um, it could be for several, it could be used for several reasons. <clears throat> Another tool that you can use in the terminal is Lighthouse. Lighthouse is a tool built by Google uh, and it is built in, it comes with every Chrome browser, but we can use it as well in the terminal. So again, we need to install it globally in our machine. And in this case, uh, this tool is not going to run a headless Chrome instance, it's going to, to run a full Chrome instance we need to run it very similar so we need to run it in the terminal put in lighthouse followed by the url that we want to test in this case i'm using the parameter dash dash view or minus minus view to um, launch the report that is going to generate after the tests are done so um since this, like, this uh, tool is, is running a full instance of a Chrome browser, we can see it run. We can see that it's performing um, accessibility tests, are going to perform responsiveness, um, it's going to perform performance tests, to be a bit redundant. Um, and at the very end, a report is going to be generated. Since I, I use the minus minus view, I can see the report and there are some scores. I click in accessibility and I can see again pretty similar information from the other tools. What element is causing which issue? I can see a bit of information about the issue. And in this case as well, um, as well as acts, I can see a direct link to uh, the resources or the documentation that Google has put together to educate and teach us a bit more about this specific issue and how to solve it. So with all these terminal-based libraries and as well with unit tests, we can automate the accessibility test of our source code if this source code is hosted with GitHub. So if you have a GitHub repo uh, repository, uh, with your source code, you can automate those accessibility tests using GitHub Actions. What is a GitHub Action? Um, GitHub Actions uh, allows you to execute development workflows, and these development workflows are just a list of tasks that you want to execute in a specific moment. So it's practically the same as having your CI CD pipeline directly in your repository. So they are based on YAML files. So you have to uh, host it in your .github slash workflows folder inside your project. And to show you a bit how this works, I uh, created a repository where I created, where I've created um, four different, um, sorry, five different GitHub actions. One to run the unit tests that I showed you before. Uh, one to run X, one to run PI11Y, and one to write Lighthouse. I say five, but it's four. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so let's see how they work. Um, so 
I specify in the in each GitHub action that I want the workflow, the list of tasks to be executed every time that I push to the, my main branch or every time that I make a pull request to my main branch. What does this mean? This means that if I create a pull request from a feature branch to my main branch, I'm going to see all these four um, uh, workflows running over my source code, the new feature that I created. And you can see if the actions has passed, and you can see this because there is a green check, or they have failed. And you can see this because there's going to be a uh, red cross. And of course, you can see more details um, for these actions if you click in details. What am I going to see if I click in details? Well, I'm going to see the whole execution of the GitHub action. <coughs> Sorry. So um, if I click in these details, I'm going to see um, the whole execution for, of this specific action. Um, in this case, or in the case that I'm showing in this, in this slide, I am checking the, <clears throat> the unit test uh, action, and I can see in the built-in terminal in the action that the, the test has, has been uh, run, and they fail because there's at least one test that has not passed. Um, um, the same with the X or P L and Y. You can see the execution and and the results. Um, but there is one specific action that has a green check, which is the lighthouse. But we've seen that the other three has a Red Cross, and why is this? Why is Lighthouse passing and, and the other ones not? This is because Lighthouse is not a testing tool. Lighthouse is a reporting tool. So, what Lighthouse does is generating reports with specific scores, and uh, based on the scores, you are the one who need to decide what to do. Uh, with, with the report and with the issues. If you click in details, you will be provided with a public URL. So in storage.googleapis.com, so it's completely public. If you want to have these reports in a private way, so for your company or for your private project, you need to build or have a uh, your own server running Lighthouse. The documentation that Lighthouse or Google put together, it is very clear on how to do it. So it's very easy to put together a server only for that. Um, if you want to know a bit more about how to test uh, the accessibility uh, of your source code using uh, GitHub Actions, I put together an article in my blog so you can read a bit more about this in there. <coughs> And the last recommendation that I give you is do manual tests or simulation tests. We talk about uh, only 20 to 50% of the issues uh, can be automated, uh, can be detected with automated tests. And of course, the first thing that we can talk about is screen readers. Uh, screen readers are software programs and they are, um, that allow a uh, visually impaired user to read the text that is displayed in the computer screen. Every um, operating system has their own uh, screen reader built in. In Apple, either iOS or Mac has voiceover. Windows has narrator. Linux has Orca. And Android has TalkBack. There are other commercial screen readers, very famous, of course, NVIDIA and JAWS. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to talk about screen readers. I think there are a lot of other uh, good talks uh, during this conference about screen readers. But I'm going to uh, talk about browser extensions. Um, 
So the first one again uh, is X. Uh, it says Chrome extension, but it is uh, equally uh, good in, in Firefox, uh, and you can find it under the development tools of your uh, of your browser. And you just need to click in Analyze, and it's going to perform a full test on your website. The results are going to be exactly the same as what we've been seeing in the X CLI or X React but in a more visual way inside the browser. So a uh, very similar tool is ARC Toolkit. So you can find it as well under the development tools of your, of your browser. You just need to click in Run Test, and they are going to run the test for a lot of uh, families. I'm clicking in Images, and I see some images with no alternate text. Good thing of this library as well, or extension. Uh, in the window of the browser, you can see highlighted which images doesn't have uh, don't have uh, alternate text. Another very good uh, example of of an extension is Accessibility Insight. This is built in by uh, by Microsoft and. In this case, I'm selecting a, a tool for, from this extension that builds a map of tabs uh, in, in your, in your uh, website. That means that the tab order of your website is very important and needs to be consistent with the content of your website. So it's a very good tool to see if, if the order is correct. Uh, another good tool is WAVE. Um, so you can find it under the uh, um, extension tool, as extension bar, and it's going to perform immediately a full test. So you can see which images that have an alternate test. You can see the structure of the headings if you're if you're missing uh, an H1 or the order is not correct. You can deactivate the whole styles of your website as well. So you can see if the if the DOM structure is correctly uh, done, and you can dig in in the HTML code. So very useful tool as well. And of course, the built-in development tools. We already talked about this before. Um, in this case, Chrome or Chromium has um, a vision deficiency, vision deficiencies emulation tool. You can find that under rendering in the in the in the development tools. And as well, Firefox has the same under the accessibility tab on, in the development tool. So very, very uh, good tools to use. So the summary of the recommendations or um, suggestions that I can give you is, again, test your code while you develop. Use the browser development tools. They are very powerful. If you can, automate your accessibility tests but don't forget to do manual tests and simulation tests. They are equally important, and they will find very different accessibility issues here. Um, the repository where uh, I put the code of the small React application that I showed you at the beginning is under my um, GitHub profile. Again, you can find it. Under my surname, Bologna, B O L O N I O. And the repository is called testing minus web minus A11Y. Uh, you can find more articles mainly about accessibility and web development in my website, uh, which is adrianbologna.com, adrianbologna.com. So my name and my surname together.com. Um, I'm sure you all aware of the huge amount of uh, content that DQ put together in the DQUniversity.com, uh, but I want to take advantage and recommend you a course about introduction to web accessibility. Uh, this is um, officially done by the W3C, and you can find that under the platform edX, so edx.org. Uh, under the courses, and the courses is called the course is called Web Accessibility Introduction. And I want to leave uh, with a couple of sentences that I think 
it, um, they, they summarize the meaning of accessibility. And there's one by Trent and Moss that once said, it's not just about disabled user being able to access your website, it's about everyone being able to access your website. Um, we've seen at the beginning that we can categorize impairments in permanent, temporary, or situational, and we are all disabled. We just don't know when it's going to be situational, when it's going to be permanent, when it's going to be temporary. So if we think about development a web product for everyone, that means that we are not excluding anyone. There is, we know that there is no such as 100% accessible or it's not accessible for everyone. But if we have this mindset from the very beginning, again, it's not in the development process, it's not a post process. We need to have this mindset for the very ideation phase. And as well, uh, the, re the responsibility of making a product accessible cannot only be on top of the development team. It has to be coming from the CEO, the CTO, product managers, UX designers, developers, testing uh, engineers. We all need to be a team together to fight for accessible products because accessibility is not a feature, never has been and never will be. We cannot treat accessibility as a post process because later never happens. And because no, no impairment is, is an election. So we cannot treat it as a feature. We need to have the mindset of including accessibility in our development process. Again, from the very beginning, so development means idea, product, requirements, the coding, and of course, testing and release. So we, we, we mentioned before about testing in the, during the development phase in the code, uh, testing, automate testing and manual testing and in the browser. But we talk about GitHub action, so in the release, in the release um, process, but we haven't talked about what tools can we use for UX designers? Uh, I think Anna Hook is gonna make a super great uh, talk about this. Uh, we can use Figma, XD, Sketch. They all provide super great tools for that. And as well, the requirement phase. We need to think on a, a web product as accessible from the very beginning, because if not, it's gonna take us more time to realize that we did wrong. And with all of this, I want to say thanks, DQ, to allow me to uh, tell a bit more about the importance of accessibility and the importance of testing properly the accessibility of your web browser. Wonderful, excellent. Adrian, thank you so much for that wonderful talk. This, there's so many compelling ideas and thoughts in this presentation. Uh, we have had a ton of questions here in the Q&A. So um, we are going to start uh, uh, handling some of these Q&A questions. Um, one of the big ones that was asked uh, is, would you recommend using a, a combination of these tools? Or, uh, or would they overlap too much and not provide additional value? So example, uh, using Axe Dev Tools, VS Code Linter, Jest Axe, um, you know, a variety of other tools. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I, I wouldn't um, use only one or one family of them. So at the beginning I said that I, uh, for, for me, I consider uh, testing accessibility as a key part of the development process. So using a linter is part of the development process. Using a Chrome Firefox Edge extension is part of the development process, as well as automating the test and manual test. I think at the beginning, at, at the end, I said that you can find very different results using each of them tools. So you can definitely find 
that an image doesn't have an alternate text, but you will not find the quality of the alternate text using alternate text. I'm gonna leave artificial intelligence out of this because I don't think we are ready yet, but you need to humanly, I mean, I think there's a human part here to understand is the quality, is the is meaningful enough this alternate text? And I'm talking about alt text, uh, the content of a button. The, you can automate test some parts, but uh, for some other ones, you really need a human part for these manual tests. So they are not exclusive. I completely agree with you on that. That's uh, seems to be one of the biggest challenges um, is trying to leverage automation as much as you possibly can, right? But automation just simply can't do the whole job. Um, so maybe audience, think about it this way. Uh, and Adrian, weigh in here. Um, accessibility automation is a means to lighten your manual testing load, right? It's not the foolproof solution, but it can certainly offload quite a few human hours. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we cannot re the same as we cannot rely on colors only to to display things. We cannot rely only. Is it is a bit funny, but we cannot rely on the machines to tell us that this is wrong, right? Yeah. And so, so it is important to to have a combination. Build your own testing process that works not only for you as a developer. In my case, a developer but for you as a company, as a product team. So build the one that works for you. Yep, absolutely. Uh, one other question here. Um, websites have a lot of web pages, whether you're using Axe DevTools, uh, Axe Core, or AQA, uh, usually capturing just one URL. Is it possible to test all URLs at once? To test all URLs at once? Um, it is possible, definitely. It's going to take more time. So I didn't mention, for example, automate tests, uh, so end-to-end -end tests, for example, with libraries like Selenium or uh, Cypress or these kind of tools that can perform actions for you as you would be a user to navigate through all these, this process. But what we want to test here is what the user is either seeing or either the screen reader is telling the user what it is in the screen. And for now, it can only be one uh, page at a time. We can test all the pages at the same time, yes, but it needs to be one at a time in a process. So it can be scripted, it can be automated, but it needs to be one by one because uh, for now the window only renders one page at a time. Yep, absolutely. I, I agree with that completely. So um, accessibility automation being a part of your existing test automation, right? Like you said, Selenium or Cypress, Playwright, Puppeteer, these, these frameworks and yeah. tools they can be used to test all of the flows and pages in your application, which you might be doing some functional testing and uh, you know, ensuring that the functionality of the actual site works. But including accessibility coverage along the way just adds that extra uh, amount of, of coverage and testing to your process. So yeah, that's exactly, a great point. Exactly. Great question to ask. Um, so we have time for two more questions. Uh, one of the other ones here. Uh, do you think we will ever get to a point where automated accessibility testing will reach a higher coverage that's greater than 20 to 50%? It is a great, it is a great question. Uh, I wish we we could definitely i don't think so it's gonna happen soon again i said let's get out of of the idea of artificial intelligence for now because we are not ready yet but um um 
Facebook, Google, um, companies like that, Microsoft, companies like that, they made great advantages on artificial intelligence, identifying what is in an image. I'm talking about images in, the, in this case. They made a lot of advantages on the trend. Um, I, again, repeating, I truly believe that in accessibility, like any other thing, human part is a key point here. We are, um, we want to have accessible websites because we usually give more context on buttons or links or any other interactive elements in a website. We want to have an accessible website because we have more content and more meaningful content in alternate text. We want to have more context in the color contrast of the elements. All of these have the same common pattern, which is a human part, a moral part of giving more context to the user that is using my product. So I don't think we're gonna, maybe we get more than 20 to 50, maybe it's even less, it's 30, but we are not gonna go that far because we need this human part. And, and I don't want to lose this human part. It is very important to check that mean, meaning you can only identify if this is meaningful enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our robot overlords haven't uh, quite covered that gap yet. Um, so maybe one day. But uh, one other question we have here. Uh, let's see. Um, one struggle we have with Axe Core and automated. Uh, testing is with complex interactive React components. Do you default to manual testing for these situations? Um, but th th this is a, this is a good question to to link to the first question. Like, can we use different tools? Uh, <clears throat> not different tools. More than one uh, process or more than one tool to 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 the same thing. So of course you have more complex uh, React components or Angular, Svelte, Vue, it doesn't matter the framework. We need to understand everything renders in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But when we have a more complex uh, component, then we need a more complex process to test it, definitely. So if you don't arrive to a point that you're happy with your results with Axe, well, then use something else on top. Cover what you are missing with something else. Is a Chrome extension for man a Chrome or browser extension to manual test it, then use it. Is it a different other tool like PLFY, like Lighthouse, like um, linters? Uh, I didn't mention that um, in the linter config file, you can extend the recommended rules, but you can uh, put your own rules. And for those rules, you can specify which component you want to test. So maybe you want to test specific rules for this component. So use more than one tool or tool family to cover the lacks of one specific library. Absolutely, wonderful. Well, everyone, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful presentation. I'd also like to give a shout out to our ASL interpreters, Chris and Whitney. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you.